there, Mike Montefusco, National Weather Service Meteorologist. This is our virtual office tour. In this video, we're gonna show you what we do on a daily basis and where we do it. So come on inside, we'll show you around the office. All right, the first thing you're going to see when you come into our operations area is our ASA's desk. She's our administrative assistant. She helps us out keeping the office tidy and organized and making sure the bills are paid, which for a government organization is very important. Uh, here are some awards the office has received over the years and a picture overhead from our office. One of our spotters actually wound up taking this picture via helicopter. Uh, this is from 2007 now, way back in 2007. Doesn't seem that long ago, but it was. Uh, and here are our a couple of our management uh, offices. Our me morning coordination meteorologist, Eric Seymour, his office is there on the right. Uh, Jeff O'Rourke, our meteorologist in charge, is down uh, at the end of the hall there. And looking at, a here's our bronze medal um, for uh, trop some tropical systems, uh, service during the, some tropical systems over the years uh, that we've received as an office. And then if you look on the wall here, we've got a uh, Isaac Klein National Award that the office received uh, a few years ago uh, as well, uh, back in, uh, I think, 2012. Going down the hall here, you can see some pictures that go to uh, some program areas across our uh, our area. This is Rudy Inlet at Virginia Beach back in the 1990s. Uh, so, some really nice pictures there. Um, some at Virginia Beach, we've got a shot there uh, in, in Virginia Beach. And here's a water spout on the Chesapeake Bay uh, that was uh, taken by, by, a, by a NOAA photographer. This is uh, some flooding at the Monticello uh, Hotel uh, down in downtown Norfolk. This is still the flood of record uh, for the city of Norfolk back in the 1933 hurricane. Here are some folks walking on the Chesapeake Bay. Uh, this occurred back in the 60s, but it has since occurred, I think, back in the 70s it also occurred. Here's a cool shot of Rudy Inlet in Virginia Beach. Two different years uh, back in the 60s and here uh, in 2005, you can see how the uh, ocean front has sprouted as well as it has. Uh, it's kind of gotten a little bit uh, busier over the years since that pic last picture was taken as well. Here are some other uh, marine uh, shots. First, the Thimble Shoal Light and Chesapeake Light. These are some data sites from our marine, very important part of our marine ops uh, operations. And here's our break room. Uh, this is uh, obviously a very important part of what we do. We're here 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So all of our meals are made and prepared here. Uh, we bring them back to our desk and kind of work through uh, work through our meals. This is our severe weather shelter as well. So if we needed to take shelter from a tornado or from a hurricane, we would be going into here. Uh, triple slatted on these doors. We can lock the door. Uh, and this room is concrete reinforced. And we have a phone out. Uh, so we can we can call out if we need to, uh, and this is how we would take shelter uh, should the need arise. And lastly, uh, here's our uh, computer room. Everything that you see in the operations area to come is going to come through this computer room. The floor is hollow, and they all lead to these servers. So the servers, would, the wires will come underneath the floor. It's better than tripping on all those wires. That's what I'm sure. And all those wires going to all the servers. Our, uh, our generator and some other equipment is back uh, through these doors as well. And this is kind of the heart of our operations, uh, our operations area coming up here. Uh, some cubicles here on the on the far side uh, to the left. Uh, this is where you would get a cubicle for non-operational forecasters. Uh, where you just have a computer where you could go through email and office training. And here is the operations area itself. This is the, the heart of the operations area where all the decisions get made and where all the work is done. Uh, here's our bulletin board, uh, our SUE's office, our science and operation officer, Mike Dutter, that's his office. Uh, and uh, this is our, uh, where we go with for our, all of our information. Uh, the TVs that you see on the wall there, those are set to local or national news most of the time. Uh, we can also put situational awareness displays, the thing you see in the center, we'll talk about that in a minute, where we keep all of our latest weather information there uh, for our purposes. This is my display here, we'll take a look at that. Uh, we've got satellite data on the left, we've got model uh, relative humidity in the middle there, and here is our gra graphical forecast editor. This is how we make our forecast every day. Uh, this is where uh, 
Everything that you see on weather.gov slash Wakefield comes every day when you look at the forecast is coming from these grids. So every weather element from temperature to relative humidity all the way down to wind and total water level, which you see on this page, on this uh, display here, goes into a grid. And all of those grids uh, put together the forecast every day. So we'll be changing and editing every element uh, every day, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, three shifts a day. Uh, you're going to see uh, these forecasts get changed and edited as needed. So we'll look at, this is our max temperature, our high temperature for the day, uh, and this is our switch over to our chance of rain. So we can kind of cycle through that. And as you can see, you can look at the chance of rain changing. Uh, the yellow uh, is the chance of rain, and as you go higher, you get into the darker colors. Here's the relative humidity. You can see green is, is uh, high humidity, and the red is saturated, which basically indicates good chance of rain. And here's our upper level pattern that I have on, on my, my uh, model display. Four separate models kind of showing the upper level pattern, and I can go through and see which models are, are behaving best. And finally, here's our low level satellite where we can kind of take a look at some clouds moving in along the coast, along our coastal front uh, this afternoon. As we go through, this is our internet display. We can kind of go through and look at uh, office email, uh, our social media display as needed. Uh, certainly our, our television here, where you can kind of keep an eye on, on what's going on locally. Uh, our situational awareness display right there in the center with all the funny colors. Uh, kind of keep an eye on the latest weather elements going on. Uh, and here's our, uh, our amateur radio setup for our net control, or should we need one uh, during hazardous weather, we can, we can do it uh, at that station. Here is our uh, display for the National Hurricane Center. This is called our Hurricane Hotline. If we do a uh, tropical conference call with the Hurricane Center, it would come through that phone. So here's our, uh, our security display. And lastly, here is our conference room. This is the, the heart of our training. Uh, also our weather event simulator, which we can relive any weather event you can think of uh, back, in, back into the uh, end of the day uh, as if it were still going on. So we could relive Irene or, or Michael or any that you could think of, even winter systems uh, and winter storms and, and coastal systems as well. Situational awareness display is also shown there. Again, we can put whatever we need to on those TVs just to kind of keep uh, an eye on what's going on weather-wise. Here's a local map. We can kind of get down into the details with the uh, locations right near the shore, uh, right along the coast, uh, and really get into the details with our with our navigation map uh, here. You can kind of get in and really take a look at the details along the coast. Along the wall here, you can see we've got a bunch of old texts. Uh, this is um, a mixture of college textbooks that we've all had. Uh, some work, uh, some research that has been done over the years, uh, as well as several um, very, uh, very dated uh, older textbooks. And as you go up into the corner here, uh, you can see we've got some older textbooks, uh, some, some references to uh, uh, Norfolk back in the early 1950s. Uh, Weather-wise, going all the way back to, to the 1950s with that, we've actually got uh, the weather records from Richmond back into the 1850, uh, 1850s and 60s uh, in a separate book. This is our radio sonde. We can kind of demonstrate this for tour groups that come into the office, kind of show what the weather balloon looks like uh, and how uh, it would behave and how it would take observations every day. And lastly, here are some instrument, uh, some some instructional guides on how to do some GIS training. So that's all for our virtual office tour. I hope you enjoyed it.